Thank you, everyone. Now we're going to hear from Dr. Jeff Goldstein, Director of Health Services. Dr. Goldstein. Yeah, so uh, thank you for having me and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, first, I wanted to you know, introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my background. Uh, I am uh, the Director of Health Services and I've been with the college now. It seems like it just flew by, but this is uh, my 22nd year. Uh, at the college, um, I actually started my career uh, in emergency medicine, and I spent the first 50% of my career uh, as an emergency physician. That, that's uh, what my training is in. That's my board certification. Um, I wanted to kind of give you uh, a little background on the health center itself. Uh, the health center uh, is located uh, right at the entrance of the college across the street from the Williams Art Center. We share this building um, with the counseling services. We are on the ground floor. And on the second floor, um, we have counseling services and also the uh, Women's Health Center. Um, in the health center, uh, just to kind of give you a general sense of what we have here, we have an in-house pharmacy. So um, for many of uh, our patient visits that uh, we prescribe medicine for, uh, the majority of the time we can uh, use medicines that are in our formulary and dispense those uh, to students uh, before they actually leave the health center. We have two uh, exam rooms on the ground floor and uh, a room in the back, which we call day beds. Those beds uh, are used for uh, situations where um, students need to be monitored. They're not quite sick enough to go out to the hospital, but they're sick enough to stay with us for a number of hours. So we do things like administer intravenous fluids for students uh, who are dehydrated for one reason or another, um, tractable vomiting, uh, students that need to be monitored uh, on a uh, monitor on a heart monitor, um, or students that are just sick that we just want to keep an eye on them. And, and our day beds are utilized from uh, eight o'clock in the morning until we leave uh, at about five o'clock. We have two labs in the health center, actually. One lab is our point of care um, lab for testing uh, for things like rapid strep tests and flu tests. Z these are tests that are done on the fly for students that have um, concerns about uh, specific diseases that we can test for in the health center, including COVID. And we also have a larger lab in the back where we do phlebotomy and uh, test for things that we can't do in the health center. So once a day, at the end of the day, uh, there are uh, labs that pick up uh, from LabCorp, Quest, and local hospitals for tests that we order in the health center, blood tests, cultures, and the like. And even if uh, your doctor at home would like to uh, do a blood test, uh, that can be done at the health center too and picked up by an outside lab. Our regular hours at the health center uh, begin at eight o'clock in the morning and end at eight o'clock in the evening. Through a collaboration uh, with St. Luke's Hospital, we have providers come in from an outside hospital network to take our place at five o'clock, and they're here until eight o'clock seeing students. We call those after hours. So a little bit about uh, our practice and services here, what we typically do. Um, I like to think of the health center as sort of a combination of primary care, urgent care, we do a little bit of everything, travel medicine, sports medicine. We have a, a section on the second floor for women's health. Um, believe it or not, uh, the, uh, the health center sees uh, about 7,000 patient visits per year. That seems like an extraordinary number given the fact that 
we only have about 2,600 or so students, but uh, students uh, use our facility a lot. Um, sometimes they just come in uh, to get a test done, to get allergy shots, to be observed for a bit, to pick up medicines, but by and large, 7,000 visits uh, per year through the health center. A little bit about charges and billing. There's always a lot of questions about that. We uh, don't function as a typical office practice uh, like you might see at home in that we don't do billing for our services here. So there's no use of students' health insurance to be seen by a provider. That being said, there are, you may see charges on your student's account for things like point of care testing. So for example, if we uh, perform a flu test or a strep test or perform an EKG or do your analysis, things that we do in the health center, uh, if we prescribe a medicine that we're giving uh, through our pharmacy, there may be a charge on, on your student's account. Our staff, uh, just to give you a sense of uh, our internal staff, uh, one physician, myself, uh, one college physician, I work very closely with uh, my colleague, uh, who I've been working with for many years now, a full-time physician's assistant, uh, and we have three uh, full-time nurses and uh, a whole bunch of uh, part-time nurses who assist us. We also uh, are fortunate to have uh, a very good uh, secretary who answers the phone constantly at the front desk. We have collaborations with two of the major hospital networks in the area. Um, as I mentioned before, when we leave uh, typically at 5 or 5.30, through a collaboration with the St. Luke's Hospital Network, providers from that network come to the health center uh, to, to continue seeing patients after hours until 8 o'clock. Um, I wanted to give you a sense, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar uh, with the area, about the resources, the hospital resources in the area. We are extremely fortunate, uh, our students, our staff, our employees, to have two exceptional hospital systems in the area. There is the St. Luke's Hospital Network and the Lehigh Valley Hospital Network. And those two networks have actually uh, taken up all the, the hospitals in the area, so they, like many areas, uh, they bought up. Uh, all the hospitals. These two hospitals are uh, thought of within the state of Pennsylvania as uh, two of the most highly respected hospitals, full service hospitals on both sides, trauma centers, uh, tertiary care centers. So there's nothing that they can't do at either network. So we're very fortunate in that regard. We also are fortunate to have numerous urgent care centers in the area, the closest one, uh, which is only a mile and a half away. So if, uh, for example, uh, our schedules are completely booked up and we can't possibly see another uh, patient in our schedule, uh, sometimes public safety will take a student out to uh, one of the local urgent care facilities. There are several uh, pharmacies that are within a mile and a half away from the hospital, uh, away from the health center. Uh, we're very fortunate to have um, a great relationship with one particular small pharmacy called Neighbor RX. And uh, this small pharmacy uh, will deliver uh, either once or twice to the health center so that if, there's if there are medications that we prescribe that we don't have in our own formulary, which comes up you know, many times a day, uh, we will send that prescription over to the local pharmacy and they'll deliver it here um, sometime during the day. A little bit about uh, what happens when our lights go out at eight o'clock. Um, as I said, uh, there are you know, two exceptionally uh, excellent hospital networks. Um, 
And so if a student requires um, medical care after hours, they have a couple different options. One is uh, to call public safety and public safety by and large uh, has an excellent record of, of making good decisions about who needs to go to the hospital and who can you know, possibly uh, wait until the next day uh, and be seen in the health center. We also have through a collaboration with the Lehigh Valley Hospital Network, uh, a nurse call system so that if a student has a problem and we are closed, for example, if it's uh, two o'clock in the morning and a student develops a fever or develops abdominal pain or has any sort of medical complaint that they just want the opinion of a qualified health care provider, they can call this uh, nurse uh, anytime and discuss you know, their signs and symptoms with the nurse. And the nurse will give good advice as to um, what the student should do. And the options would be, uh, we think you need to go out to the hospital or uh, we could arrange a telemedicine visit with one of our providers, or we think you can wait till tomorrow. So there is that opportunity for a student to talk to a nurse uh, when the health center is closed. A little bit about uh, communication with parents, because that's a really critical um, piece of information that I'm sure everyone wants to hear about. First and foremost, I will tell you that if anything of a super serious nature um, uh, arises in any of our students, you can be sure that I will contact you and let you know at least in general what is happening. For most other communications, obviously uh, we are completely HIPAA compliant and you know, students will need to consent to allow us to speak with you. Some students and parents uh, sign a consent uh, at the beginning of the year, which is a blanket consent saying, you can talk to my parents anytime. Uh, and they we just look in the record and, you know, uh, we'll uh, use that as a consent throughout the year. I'll tell you, there are many uh, situations uh, where I, I am in the exam room and chatting with a student about a particular problem, and um, students will want to have their parent or parents involved in the conversation. And I, I, we'll, we'll just do a, a speakerphone communication while in the exam room. So we have different options, but you know, just to be clear, you know, we're completely HIPAA compliant and we'll only speak to parents uh, unless uh, with the consent of the student, unless it's something really super concerning. I want to spend just the last couple minutes uh, chatting about your friend and mine, uh, COVID-19. <laughs> uh, can't believe that we are now into our third year of the pandemic. Uh, when the pandemic began uh, three years ago, I had a complete full head of hair and like see what's happened to me. So we are now in a position uh, to manage COVID similarly to other uh, endemic respiratory viruses. That being said, I, I want to review a couple items and protocols that uh, will uh, still continue into this academic year, starting with testing. In the past, we did surveillance testing on the entire population, and then we transitioned to surveillance testing for segments of the population, including those that were unvaccinated. And we have now transitioned to testing only those students who are seen uh, for diagnostic purposes with concerning signs or symptoms. So free COVID testing is available at the health center. We use it commonly to differentiate uh, COVID from other respiratory viruses. We have both antigen testing and PCR testing, that sophisticated test that often goes out to 
an outside lab entity, we have PCR testing within the health center as well. And that's all free testing. And then um, last but not least is the issue of isolation. Uh, if uh, we will see students uh, this year, this semester with COVID, you know, Omicron is still circulating and I'm sure, you know, everyone listening knows at least uh, one person who has had COVID in the last month. Um, students who test positive will still be required to isolate for um, five days uh, until their fever is resolved and their symptoms are improving and then wear a mask for an additional five days after that. What, differenti what differentiates this year from uh, certainly the beginning of last year is that students who are um, diagnosed with COVID will isolate in their uh, assigned rooms unless there are extenuating circumstances uh, such as you know someone uh, who has a roommate who uh, ha has a high risk profile is, is compromised for one reason or another. So that that is uh, all I uh, have intended to share with with um, you guys this morning. Uh, certainly uh, my uh, door and phone is always available to have a conversation with you. Uh, if you have any specific questions, um, I, I am happy to, to speak with, um, with anyone. So uh, thank you for uh, the time uh, uh, listening uh, and you know, have a great day. Thank you, Dr. Goldstein.